as technology becomes a more important part of people's lives. The opportunities are expanding for patients to use technology to manage their health information. Healthcare providers are beginning to develop online patient portals that allow patients to access their health records and communicate with their providers. We are just at the beginning of this kind of innovation. There's a huge, huge role for um, IT to play in engaging patients in their health care. You, you know, if you stop and think about all the things that we do as individuals online today, you know, we buy our airline tickets or we do our holiday shopping or we, um, you know, check our stocks or we, you know, there's thousands of things that people can do online. But interacting with our healthcare provider and getting, you know, a glimpse into our medical record, the way we can look at our bank statements, just doesn't happen very often. So I think if we as a nation really want to engage patients in their health and health management, we've got to really push that online access to your provider, to your record, in order to get them um, engaged and get them to understand their their health and their medical conditions and start to manage those better. I, I absolutely think that that consumer technology space is going to be a major positive disruptor. Uh, and as people have access to their information, as they have the attitude and the cultural shift in, on the part of patients and providers, that it's okay for patients to be partners in their care. And as there are now a whole ecosystem of apps and services that help people choose a provider, find out what things cost, make an appointment, manage their health. Those three things, access, attitudes, and action, are going to completely disrupt from a very positive way healthcare. Patients are starting to want access to their information. They've got access to a lot of other information about their lives now. Everybody's walking around with a smartphone. Everybody knows where the best rated restaurant is in their area. And they're starting to say, why don't I have access to the same kind of information in healthcare? Now, there's some rules that you've got to follow, some very careful considerations you've got to make when you're thinking about the privacy and security of health information that's not quite the same as a restaurant review. But nonetheless, we really should still be able to have access to our own health information, and not just access to it, but in a way that makes sense to us, that's usable to us. We're participants in our care, and uh, that's really important for us to be able to get good care. But I think the bigger difference is fundamentally it can make the partnership between the patient and the provider facilitated by that screen. Instead of the screen being between the doctor and the patient, the screen and the information really can be that third party that they're both looking at. If we can both look at the same information both of us, the patient and the doctor, look at the same information. That unlocks an entirely new dynamic for patients of relating to their own health and health care. If I can see my records, which is my right, by the way, right? Everyone has that legal right, but how often do people exercise that right in a paper-based world? Not that often. But with an electronic world, it's becoming part of health care. The same way it's become part of banking. The same way it's become part of telecom, the same way it's become part of every other aspect of our life. We expect to see that same information that our service provider is seeing. But in medicine, even though it's been our legal right, we haven't actually made it easy for patients to see what you're seeing as a doctor. And that's changing as part of meaningful use. The good news is patients are so savvy now with technology, they really expect you to know how to get their information and get it presented in, in a very visual way. So it's been interesting to watch some of our physicians learn to cope with, here's my, my chart now, and invite that patient into that collaborative discussion of this is what I know about you and this is the information. Now tell me more. What's changed? And they actually see the physician updating their record. And of course we're very excited about the long-term goal of having the patient actually access information in this um, electronic world. So I, I think that has been the most exciting change for us with the technology. One of the things that's happened right now is is to sit down with the patient and, and our practice have taken the, the standpoint that we chart except for the final plan right in front of the patient 
and they see what we're putting in, they see what we're writing. Um, for example, I had a patient yesterday that the diagnosis of obesity flashed up on the screen. It's a true diagnosis, but the patient was like, what? why is that there? And we explained that her height weight put her in that category. And it hit home that her weight was something she was going to have to deal with. And so it led, gave me the opportunity to sort of engage her in that you meet this criteria. We've seen that with medications. Oh, I don't take that. Oh, I know I'm supposed to be on this, but I don't take it anymore. So we're, with medication reconciliation, while it is an extra step, something most people aren't used to doing, we're seeing, we're finding, getting a more accurate picture of what our patients are actually taking. Most of us see physicians all over the, the, uh, the city and sometimes in, in multiple cities. And uh, there's not, there, there will be an opportunity for, you know, for patient portals and such uh, devices where a patient can go and say, you know, I had a, I had a re reaction to a medication when I was out in California. And they can enter that, that, that allergy into their system back home so that their physician has that, that information at hand. Uh, if they have a test done uh, somewhere else, they can have that done. If they get their flu shot at, at one of the local drugstores, they can go online and document that so that that information is available to, to the physician, their primary physician, when they go see them at the, at the next visit. Um, you know, I can see a, a situation down the line where patients, before they come in for a visit, will also get on and, and update their histories, um, answer a brief survey about what symptoms they have, what's going on, any concerns they have, so that make sure that that information is, is is presented to the, the, the clinical staff when they come for their visit. Social media applications, like other technologies, have exploded. While there are many positive possibilities for social media in healthcare, there are also some cautions. The current state of healthcare uh, provides a lot, of, a lot of great tools uh, in providers' offices, in hospitals, in pharmacies. Uh, we're seeing the development of health information exchange capabilities and some patient-facing technologies. Uh, I'm really expecting over the next five to ten years that a lot of the changes uh, in technology that we're seeing in the broader market, um, uh, whether this is social media or uh, other kinds of personalized access to information, are going to become a lot more prevalent in healthcare. Um, uh, some people talk about apps. I could definitely see it working that way. We might have some changes in the architecture that none of us can really anticipate. But uh, the, the key thing is that we should expect that information is going to be made available to us in a way that's significant for us, whether it's us the doctor or us the patient or uh, us the policymaker. Uh, we should expect over the next five to ten years that the information flows are going to become a lot more tailored for individuals. There are, there are many organizations that are using social media to enhance the customer relationship management and uh, it varies from uh, customers forming communities around products and services and sharing best practices with each other, sharing their enthusiasm and their gripes and I think that healthcare organizations need to do the same thing. I think what that comes down to in the short run is organizations have to have a social media strategy. They've got to understand where they want to be and why. They've got to uh, put some constraints on it as well. They've got to uh, educate their workforce about um, their conduct in the social media. And um, if they're smart about it, I think that there's an awful lot of leverage, an awful lot of publicity and energy in the social media and in uh, facilitating communities in the social media, whether it's more patient-oriented or more consumer-oriented, that uh, the smart uh, healthcare organizations are actually doing a good job on right now. I think it can improve outcomes for individuals because in many cases, especially complex cases, where you go to see a specialist and you interact with a doctor who understands this very, very well, and speaks to you in a language that's mostly Greek and Latin and maybe gives you some things to read but it's not quite the same as interacting with other people who have the disease where you can ask questions and not feel like you're being dumb or ask for things to be repeated. Um, so I think it's a very valuable interaction for patients who are willing to, uh, to participate in that. And I, I wish more doctors would be, um, I think they are getting more open to this, but uh, it, I wish more were um, open to connecting up their patients to talk to each other about these issues. Because some of the things that you have to do when you have these peculiar diseases, they don't make sense from a layperson's point of view. 
But if you talk to a bunch of other people and they say, oh, when I tried that, this is what happened, and yes, you know. On the other hand, there's a lot of garbage out there, too. And um, the interaction between the, the, the patients who are recommending things to each other and the scientific community that can say, yeah, we see why you're saying that, but look, here's what's really going on, and that's actually going to hurt or not do anything. Why don't you try one of these things, which have been scientifically shown to be more useful, and then get that back into the, the conversation. There's, there's a, uh, almost a Chinese wall between the patient interactions and the scientific community that I hope goes away as this phenomenon spreads. Looking at the future, I'm incredibly optimistic. Actually, it's it's sometimes in healthcare people have been around healthcare for a long time, they they feel oh healthcare is never going to change. I actually think that healthcare is changing, and I'm incredibly optimistic at the direction of the change. The first is, as an infrastructure, we're going to have health IT. Right? We are past the tipping point. The majority of healthcare delivered in this country by the end of this year, I believe, will be delivered through electronic health records in doctors' offices and hospitals. So that's the first near-term thing is, it's going to go in a short span of a few years from something that was an unusual thing to do in these few benchmark institutions to most care in this country is going to, and increasingly it's going to be unusual if healthcare is not going to be delivered with electronic health records. And that's a good thing. Health IT is going to break out of electronic medical records for doctors and hospitals it's going to be embedded in the consumer technology space. There are now tens of thousands of medical apps and increasingly it's being seen uh, as something that actually is going to help people stay healthier, help people take their medications, uh, the right medications, help people connect to others who have the same problem and get advice from those other uh, patients. There's going to be uh, competition and gaming about how well you control your weight or how well you control your, your blood sugar. Uh, there's going to be ways of managing your healthcare finances. It's so complicated, it's too complicated, and we could all use some help. I know that when my dad was left the hospital and I had a kitchen table full of bills and explanation of benefits and it was anything but an explanation, so why can't I get someone to help me take all that information and help me manage my health my dad's health, my health care finances, and that's coming. If the past five to 10 years have led to increased adoption of health informatics for doctors and hospitals, the next decade will see health IT applications with a focus on the patients. Patients will routinely access their health information and share it when they change providers. Applications will be more tailored to the needs of the individual. There will be shared decision-making as patients become more engaged and both doctors and patients have access to the same information. Social media is being embraced by healthcare providers as well. It can be used to enhance customer relations by providing new means of communication between the patient and the provider. Online support groups for patients can provide access to sources of information that have not been easily available to patients in the past. As with any new technology, we can expect to discover unexpected advantages and challenges. But we can expect the next 10 years to be the decade of the technologically savvy, engaged patient.